I've heard it said that the Lord has three qualifications for his leaders. Number one, they need to be weak. God uses the weak to show himself strong. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 29 says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put the shame to shame the things that are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Are you weak? Well, then you qualify for God to use you and make you strong in him. And then second, a godly leader needs to be willing. God looks at the attitude of your heart. Are you willing to obey what God tells you to do? If you are, that's faithfulness. There have been so many times that Joe has gotten phone calls late at night or when he's been totally busy and a person has requested him to go and make an emergency hospital visitation because somebody is dying. I know he doesn't always feel like going, but his heart is always willing and obedient because he'll never pass up an opportunity to share the gospel with anyone who's about to enter eternity. And Joe is always so overjoyed when most of those that he goes and sees accept the Lord, and he realizes the blessing and the privilege and honor that God used him to share the gospel at this crucial time in their lives. And then third, a godly leader God's looking for is one who is available. Is your time your own or does it belong to God? If he is Lord, you will make time for his work. That's faithfulness. Think about it. Jesus told, uh, chose 12 apostles to follow him, to train them to be leaders and then to change the world. Seven of them were fishermen. One, Matthew, was a hated tax collector. Another, Simon, was a Canaanite zealot who wanted to overthrow the Roman government. And then there was, of course, Judas, the betrayer, a thief and an embezzler. And the other two, we have no idea what they did. And then there was Paul. Granted, Paul was a leader. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, but he was also a persecutor and a murderer of Christians. But remember what God had to do to Paul before he could even use him? God had to break him, blind him, humble him, and totally start over again, teaching him after he surrendered to the Lord. Yet these ordinary men, These common men became extraordinary and turned the world upside down for Jesus and for what they believed. And with the exception of Judas, who committed suicide after his betrayal, all the others, with the exception of John, died for their faith. The world counted these men as insignificant, marginal, and foolish. Probably they thought of them as a motley crew of totally unqualified leaders. But God counted them for what he would make of them. And with the exception of Judas again, as giants of the faith, as leaders by his calling and empowerment. In Philippians 1.6, Paul writes, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Will you allow the Lord to use your life as a leader for his plan and his purpose? He will accomplish it through you.